Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with a really fun video. It is the first in a new series. I'm going to be trying to do one of these every single month. And this is an author spotlight video. And today I am spotlighting author Kristen Higgins. Um, the reason I decided to start with her, which I'm sure a lot of you are probably like, you talk about Heather Graham like all the time. But Kristen Higgins was one of the very first authors, her and Susan Wiggs, that I actually found when I started reading contemporary romance novels. And she holds a very special place in my heart, and I literally just finished this week one of her books, one of her newer books, and oh, the feels, guys, the feels. So this video is going to be really off the cuff, me just kind of talking a little bit about the author. Um, so I'm actually going to read a little bit that was written here on her Goodreads page, and I will link to her Goodreads page in the description box below, so you guys can check it out and go check out her books and see if there's anything that that I don't talk about um, that you might find interesting. So once I've given this like little talk about her, I'm going to talk about my history reading her, um, how I found her books, and a few of my very favorites. And so let's jump in and get started. Um, Kristen Higgins is the New York Times and international, internationally, I can read, best-selling author of more than a dozen novels. Her books have been honored with dozens of awards and accolades, including starred reviews from Publishers Weekly, Kirkus, Library Journal, The New York Journal of Books, and Romantic Times. Um, most of her books are set in the New England area, either New York or Boston, that kind of area, and it's really funny because as a diehard, lifelong Boston Red Sox fan, the occasional time that her books are set in New York and her characters are Yankees fans, I just, I don't like them nearly as much. But there's the occasional ones where they're actually Red Sox fans. It's like, yay! Um, so that's really kind of fun. Um, I adore her books. And I found her quite by chance. I was in a bookshop, might have even been Walmart, and I was looking for something to read. Now, this was after I started reading, like, the Harlequin novels, um, not too long after. And I hadn't really uh, graduated from there. I shouldn't say graduated, like, they're a step down. But I hadn't moved from them to more um, contemporary, um, standalone, outside of the category romance novels. And I saw this cover, and this is the exact cover, the original cover, for the book Just One of the Guys. Um, and I saw the cover and I'm like, oh my god, that's a dog wearing a firefighter's hat. What is this book about? I need to know. So I grabbed the book off the shelf and I read the back cover and I'm like, yes, I'm going to give it a try. And I think, yeah, it even says it on the front cover. It says, great low price, $4.99. Um, so I bought it for like five bucks. I mean, we're going back. It's probably, this was before I met my husband and Garrett and I have known each other eight years. So it's got to be going on nine, maybe 10 years ago that I found this book. And I don't know if this was a new release at the time. I don't think it was. Maybe it was a reissue. I don't remember. Um, I should have looked to see what the um, what the date on this was, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, so this story is still above and beyond my very, very favorite Kristen Higgins novel. And I don't think it gets a lot of um, discussion because it's older and um, it's maybe not as popular, but oh my God, guys, this story is fabulous. So it's about a girl named Chastity or a woman named Chastity. And she grew up in a family of people... Um, like, for lack of a better term, heroes. Um, her father is the chief of, um, the, is it chief of firefighters? Or firefighter captain or something like that? And I think if I remember correctly, her parents are actually split up. Um, but her father's like the fire captain. And then she has four brothers, all older than her. And like two of them are firefighters. One's an EMS. One's a search and rescue. And she's totally afraid of the sight of blood. So like... She's got all these, like, guys in her family who are doing, like, these amazing things, and she's terrified of blood. Um, and she's tall, like, she's a taller than normal girl, and she feels awkward, and she feels whatever. And her brothers have a friend that they kind of all grew up together named Trevor. She has a history with Trevor. So it's her and Trevor's story, and I'm telling you, this book is so, so fantastic. Her humor, and that's what got me first about Kristen Higgins, is she writes some brilliant one-liners. Um, her characters are witty, and the conversations are so, so much fun. I just, I cannot recommend her enough, and if, in any of the books that I talk about in this video, 
I highly recommend you check this one out. Um, like I said, it does not give, get as much um, love or as much discussion. I haven't heard really anybody else on BookTube talk about this book in particular. Um, I know uh, Jen from today and Jen Library talks about Kristen Higgins quite a bit. She's listening to a lot of her books on audio, and she's quite pleased with the narration. But this one, please, please do yourself a favor and read it. It She writes characters that are so true to life, and they're a little awkward, and they're a little different. And every single one of her books, except for one, features a dog. Um, the main character, or one of the main characters, always has a dog. So if you're a dog lover, definitely, definitely check it out. Um, check her out for sure. The next book by her that I want to talk about is called The Next Best Thing. And like I said uh, just a second ago that all of her books feature dogs except for one. This is the one that does not. This one features a cat by the name of Fat Mikey <laughs> that the main character Lucy has. So the plot line of this one, now like if I had to rank my favorite Kristen Higgins novels in order, this is the order that I'm sharing them with you. So number one is just one of the guys. Um, the Next Best Thing is the next favorite one. Um, this is about a uh, story about Lucy, and Lucy is a widow, a young widow. Um, her husband passed, I cannot remember how, um, but she comes from, and this is going to sound really funny, um, a family of widows. If you guys have ever seen the movie Practical Magic or watched the um, movie, you know that there's like a big part of it is that um, whoever they fall in love with end up, ends up dying. Well, that's kind of the thing or curse, if I will, if I can, if I can say that, that this family has. Um, her mother and all of her aunts are all widows. She's a widow. She has a sister who is not a widow, but the sister spends her entire like married life making sure where her husband is 24-7 and pretty much driving him crazy because she's so afraid that he's going to suddenly drop dead. Um, you know, because it's, it's happened to every other woman in the family. So, you know, Lucy, like I said, is a young widow. I believe she's a baker or a chef or something like that. Um, and she um, has this relationship with, um, I think it was her husband's brother or best friend. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I read this book. But what I remember most about this book was laughing at certain things. And then there's this poignant scene towards the end that just had me sobbing. I mean, it was just so emotional and so wonderfully written. Again, realistic characters, realistic situations. I loved this book. Um, I mean, I love all of her work, but again, the two that I've already mentioned and the next one are above and beyond my favorites. So please check these out. And if you're a cat fan, you want to hang out with Fat Mikey because he's pretty freaking awesome. I think he just like lays around the whole time. <laughs> Hence his name, Fat Mikey. And the last one I want to talk about is one that's gotten a little bit more discussion on BookTube, and that is The Best Man. Um, this is a, not newer, I'd say in the last four or five years this one came out, sorry for the glare. Um, this is the first book in the Blue Heron series. This is the first series that she wrote. Um, when I say that, the first series that she meant to be a series. Um, the one that I just talked about, um, The Next Best Thing is part of the Gideon's Cove series, but it's not really truly a series. It's labeled that way on Goodreads, but they're more companion stories where they take place in the same town. Um, these ones follow each other, so you're seeing characters from the first book to the second book. So this first book is Faith and Levi's story. And I've read this book now twice, um, I, I, and I will read it again. I guarantee it. Um, essentially, this story is um, about Faith. And she, I don't remember how many years ago it was, five years ago, six years ago, was essentially left at the altar for the lack of a better term. Um, Levi was the best man in the wedding and best friends with the groom. And he'd known their entire time, now this is not a spoiler because this is kind of given away right at the very beginning of the book, that um, the groom was actually gay. And the groom knew it, but he didn't want to admit it, and I can't remember his name, so I'm sorry I keep just calling him the groom. Um... So essentially it breaks Faith's heart. They've been together since high school. She'd been planning this wedding since the day that they met. And she blames Levi for ruining that. Even though in reality, the marriage would have never worked in the long run. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, um, it kind of goes back and forth. And Kristen Higgins does this very well. And she does it in just one of the guys as well, where they go back and forth in time. Um, because her and Levi have known each other since they were children. So it kind of goes back and forth, their relationship, 
because they can't stand each other. And they were only friends because of the groom, because, of course, she was going to marry him, and Levi was his best friend. So, you know, it, it ugh, some very poignant and heartbreaking scenes in this book, some really hysterical scenes in this book. Um, Faith has a, has a really sad backstory that I don't want to get into, um, but her mother passed when she was young, so there's more to it than just that. The second book in the series called The Perfect Match um, is her sister's story, and then I think the next book is her brother's story, and then the next book is like a friend of the family. So they are interconnected where it's the same family kind of idea, um, and they all take place in a vineyard, too. That's the whole, in, I think in upstate New York, it's in a vineyard, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and again, she has a dog, of course, as you can see, there's a golden retriever there. Um, so yeah. I, I love this book. absolutely love it. And the whole series is great. But this book, the first, is still probably my favorite. Um, so yeah, so those are the three books that I want to talk about. She has, like it said, about a dozen books. I, I just finished reading this week. Um, oh my gosh, what's it called now? I'm going to put the title here because it's completely escaping me. If You Only Knew is the one that I just finished. And these other ones have, have um, been like contemporary romance. There's always a romance um, at the core of the story, the romance between these two characters. Whereas um, If You Only Knew is more a story about sisters. It's a story about two sisters named Jenny and Rachel. And sorry, I don't have a cover. Yes, I do have a cover to show you. No, I don't. Sorry, I'm lying. Um, I thought, oh, yes, I do. Haha, <laughs> here it is. So the story is about um, Jenny and Rachel. And um, Jenny uh, is recently divorced, and she's a wedding dress designer. And her sister Rachel is married and just recently found out that her husband is cheating on her. And the story goes from there. And the chapters go back and forth between the two sisters' perspectives. So you can see, like, because there's, like, two, two different storylines, but they kind of interconnect together. And it's really, really well done. And this book was fantastic. Um, I finished it. And, I mean, I'm going to talk more about this in my wrap-up when I, when I do my wrap-up at the end of March. But it was one where I was like, where's the epilogue? You know, not that it left it on a cliffhanger because it didn't, but it just left it like you going, well, what happens next? You know, like, what, what, I want to know where the characters are now. What are they doing? Um, and I'm really, really hoping that Kristen Higgins revisits this town. And, you know, maybe we run into Jenny and Rachel at a coffee shop or on the street or something just so we can see where there are now because you become so invested in these characters and I think that's the magic of Kristen Higgins' work, is that you feel like you know these people. That, you know, you're hearing about a friend. And they're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Again, I could not recommend these books enough. Please check them out. So anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy these author spotlight videos. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's any authors that I've mentioned before that you might want me to do a video on. I do have a list of them started, but I am more than happy to add to the list. Um, and let me know in the comments below if you've read any by Kristen Higgins and what your favorite was. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Take care and happy reading, everybody. <laughs> Bye.